In this video, we're going to take a look at applying the central limit theorem to other distributions. So in the previous video, we introduced the concept of the central limit theorem, as well as attempting some practice questions. And what we want to do now is apply the central limit theorem to other distributions, such as the binomial distribution, the Poisson distribution, and the geometric distribution. Now, before you watch this video, ensure that you're confident with the concept of the central limit theorem, as well as working with the following probability distributions. So we have the binomial distribution, the Poisson distribution, the geometric distribution, and then finally the negative binomial distribution. It's important that you can find the mean and variance for each of these distributions here. Okay, so that's a very quick introduction here, but we don't really need anything else. So let's take a look now at some practice questions here for applying the central limit theorem to other distributions. Let's start off then with question one here. So for question one, we have a random sample of 20 observations that's taken from the random variable X, which follows a geometric distribution with parameter of 0.4. So to start off then with part A, all I want to do here is find the expectation of X, that's E of X here, and also the variance of X. So E of X, this is the same as finding the mean here. So that's the same as finding the mean. And then for var X here, we're looking for the variance. Okay. Now, given that the random variable X follows a geometric distribution, then if we want E of X and var X, that's the same as finding the mean and variance of a geometric distribution. So I think a good place to start here then for part A is to just denote the correct results then for the mean and variance of a geometric distribution. So for part A then, we need the expectation of X where X is geometrically distributed. So in that case, then we simply get one over P. So one over P there. And then for the variance of X here, this is var X. This is equal to one minus P all over P squared. Okay. So let's start then by finding the expectation of X here. So this is for part A. So for the expectation of X is equal to one over P where for this example here, P is equal to 0.4. Okay. So we get one over 0.4. So one over 0.4, this would give us five over two, nice and straightforward. So we get five over two there or 2.5, whichever you prefer to denote it as. And then for the variance here, we get one minus 0.4 all over 0.4 squared okay so 1 minus 0.4 over 0.4 squared just put this into your calculator here and if you do this correctly what you should get then is 3.75 okay and there we have it so that is the solution to part a now for part b then it says using the central limit theorem estimate the probability that the sample mean is less than two so let's just start then by noting that we're using the central limit theorem so using the central limit theorem, I'll abbreviate this as CLT. So using the central limit theorem then. Now the sample mean here then, this would be X bar. Under the um, central limit theorem here, this would be approximately normally distributed, like so. And now we have our two parameters. So we've got the mean here, mu which in this case would simply be the expectation of X. That would be five over two. So we get five over two there for our first parameter. Now for the second parameter here, just be careful. It isn't simply 3.75. It will be 3.75 divided by the sample size. Okay. So you get 3.75 over 20 there. Like so. And now the probability that we're looking for here is the probability then that the sample mean X bar is less than two. So X bar is less than two. Okay. And then clearly to find this probability here, all we're going to do is use our calculator. So open your calculator then, um, go into stats mode, distribution, normal, and then NCD. Now it asks for a few different things here. So the first thing it asks for is the data type, which clearly in this case is a variable. So let me just write these down here um, over on the right hand side. So we've got data, 
which in our example here is a variable. I'll just show on that to var here. We then we then ask for the lower and upper value. So lower and upper. Now in this case then, because we're looking for the probability that the sample mean x bar is less than two, what that means then is two goes into the upper value here. So we put two as the upper value. And then for the lower value here, we just pick an arbitrarily small value. So I just put minus 99999, like so. Something like this will be absolutely fine. And it also asks us for sigma here and mu. So sigma and mu. So clearly mu is just this parameter here, five over two, nice and straightforward. Now for sigma, just be careful here. So it isn't simply at 3.75 over 20. Don't forget this is the variance. This is sigma squared. So if we just want sigma, that would be the square root then. So that's the square root of 3.75 over 20. Okay. Input all this then into your calculator. And if you do this correctly, what you should find then for this probability here is we get 0 0.1. So 0 0.124 there. Okay. And that is two free significant figures. But there we have it. So that's the solution to B. And that gives us the solution there to question one. So if we just take a look then at one more question here, we have question two where we have a postman who delivers parcels. The random variable X is used to represent the number of parcels successfully delivered by the postman each day, where X follows a binomial distribution with parameters then of N equals 300. So N equals 300 and p is equal to 0 0.7. Okay, so p equals 0 0.7. We're then told that a random sample x1, x2, so on and so on, up to x80 is taken, and it asks us to estimate the probability that the mean number of parcels delivered each day by the postman is greater than 212. So where do we begin here? Well, the first thing that I noticed then is our random variable x here is binomially distributed. So what we need then is the mean and variance of a binomial distribution. Okay, so let's just start then by denoting the correct formulas then. So the expectation of x here. So this is for the mean of a binomial distribution. This is equal then to NP. So the products of our parameters, NP here. And then for the variance here, var x. This is equal to NP times by one minus P here. Okay, so let's find these here then. So NP, that is simply 300 times 0.7. So 300 times 0.7, that would give us 210 there. Okay, so that's NP. So then for the variance of X here, this is NP times one minus P. So we know the value of NP, that's 210. So we get 210 times one minus P. So if P is 0 0.7, we do one minus 0 0.7. So we times this by 0 0.3, okay? And in that case, then we get 63 here for the variance of X, okay? So we've got the mean and the variance here. So now we can use the central limit theorem. So using the central limit theorem, again, we'll just shorten this to CLT. So using the central limit theorem here, CLT, then the sample mean here, X bar, will be approximately normally distributed. Like so we then got our two parameters here. So the mean is simply the expectation of our random variable X here. So that's 210, nice and straightforward. Now for this um, parameter here, our second parameter, not quite as straightforward. In this case, then it's going to be 63 over the sample size. We get 63 here over our sample size then of 80. Okay, 80 there. So 63 over 80, like so. So we've got our distribution here then under the central limit theorem. So now if we want to estimate the probability that the mean number of parcels delivered each day by the postman is greater than 212, what we're looking for here in that case is the probability that the sample mean X bar is greater than 212. Okay. And to do this, all we simply do here is use our calculator again. So again, we go into stats mode. I'll do this as well. So stats mode here, distribution, normal, and again, 
NCD here. And let's just list what we need here. We'll do this now on the left hand side. So again, the data is a variable. We then have the lower and upper value. So lower and upper. So in this case then, because we're now looking for the probability that our sample mean X bar is greater than 212, what this means then is 212 goes into the lower value. Okay, so 212 as the lower value. Now for the upper value here, we pick an arbitrarily large value. So I just put a load of nines there. Okay, so I put a load of nines in on my calculator and just denote that here as well. So nine, 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 so on and so on. Okay, that's fine. We then also have sigma here. So sigma and mu. Now just be careful here for sigma. So obviously mu is nice and straightforward. That's simply 210. Like so. However, for sigma, like I said, just be careful here. So in this case, it's not 63 over 80. This is sigma squared. So we need to take the square root of this here because we just want sigma, right? So we take the square root of 63 over 80. Like so. So I do the square root of 63 over 80. Uh, the mean then is 210, as we mentioned. So I just put my lower value in as well, 212, and then press enter here and we get the correct probability here. So if you do this correctly, then what you should find here for the mean number of parcels or the probability, um, that the mean number of parcels delivered each day by the postman is greater than 212. This is equal then to 0 0.0121 there. Okay. And there we have it. So like you can see, it's a little bit more challenging when it's in context, just because we have to pick out the important bits of information that we actually need um, or the central limit theorem, but nothing too challenging there, I don't think. Okay. But there we have it. So that gives the solution to the very last question, question two. And that brings us to the end of this video on applying the central limit theorem to other distributions.